free trade. She just doesn't like the European Union. Uh -huh. It's kind of a strange combination, but... <laughs> Probably EU has its own problem that they need to deal with. Yeah. She probably want to start it with yeah. her own way. Yeah. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but there is still this sense of the na national governments need to take back more control. And I think that's an illusion. I mean, to a degree, they could take back some control, but I mean, basically, no. Britain is not big enough to have much control in any case. <laughs> but they, th they think they can. Anyway. Now, so what do you plan to do after you finish your master's degree? I'm not sure. <laughs> that is a good like question. many of my students, that's what they say. <laughs> that is, that's, that's always a problem. <laughs> what do you still want to do? Know, they, a lot of them want to work in, well they did want to work in government now that Trump is president they don't want to work in government <laughs> I have to tell them you know he won't be president forever <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah well or even I think it's going to hurt our applications in Washington for for the international affairs degrees because people want to come to Washington because they want to be interns and you know working you know when, when you're having Big cuts to agencies like EPA and potentially cuts to the State Department and like it doesn't make it look very attractive. And you talk to the people right now who are working in the EPA and they're just so demoralized. So, and the State Department, they just don't know what's going on. I mean, it's amazing. They don't have anybody, yeah, they don't have any work. I mean, it's like they're waiting for people to be appointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I had someone tell me literally that he was asking some of the people from the embassies who were calling him what they knew <laughs> about what was going on. I know. You know but maybe they knew something that he didn't know. <laughs> so. I thought Eli gave a great presentation and it would, if anything kind of more positive on the way things are than I would have been. I mean, it's the way they work from North Korea without having a China policy, without having an Asia policy. I mean, you know. I mean there's a certain mechanics to sure. Whoever talked to him last, you know? And luckily, the right people basically have been talking to him last recently, which is not Bannon. <laughs> But, you know, on a bad day, it might go the other way, so... Yeah. So you all think, like, Trump doesn't have the right people in the nomination? Well, he doesn't, he doesn't have... He doesn't have any people in, in the, the lower positions. They have deputies, undersecretaries, and assistant secretaries. There's only one undersecretary in the State Department right now, acting deputy secretary. And he was a permanent... He's permanent. one assistant secretary, acting secretary... Oh, yeah. Do you think it's because Trump likes to act things in his own way? Well, it's, it's partly, isn't it? Partly the White House is so divided and, and people can't pass the test with the with both factions, or, or you know, all factions. You know, a lot, some people have been ruled out by the Bannon side, right? I have no insight into Trump. <laughs> I supported Hillary Clinton. I have no special insight into Trump. And I think that Yeah, I, 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 by attrition, you know, just not have bodies in seats. Yeah. Well, I mean, in some of the cases, some prominent cases like the, um, the undersecretaries and the like, there were cases where it was clear that they had been vetoed by, yeah. for political reasons. You know, they were, they were unacceptable to the Bannon ring. Especially at Yeah. 
I was amazed that they had. They mentioned Michelle Flournoy, for example, for a job at the Pentagon. She would be fantastic, but the idea that she wouldn't do it, and the idea that they would accept her, the, the political crowd would say, I, and Richard Haas, of course, was mentioned. I mean, the idea that Bannon would accept the president of the Council of Foreign Relations in a job at the state, when Elliot Abrams was turned down. I definitely sense, I mean, we talked to Eli and Scott about this, but yeah. the tenor of the remarks in the room show a definite shift on the Chinese side on North Korea. Yeah. I mean... Well, it could be because it's their academics. Well, that's right. We don't know how. But these are people who are well-connected. And, and I think, I mean, in, in this setting, they can speak very frankly, but I have a feeling that there are signals. There are other signals that have been mentioned in the press in the United States, even the historian who gave the very prominent historian who works on Korea who gave a very outspoken speech. It was anti-North Korea. And, and, and he he not only was gave the speech, he was allowed to post it on the internet. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. yeah. So, it meant something, right? Yeah, it meant something. It meant, it meant somebody wants a little more debate about North Korea. Maybe to send a signal to North Korea, right? I right, mean, right. <laughs> And people even talking about like the strike to Syria was meant to warn North Korea. Well, North Korea might like, might feel like agitated and yep. even feel more like to develop the weapon. Right? Possibly. I feel like the two sides are not like communicating to Wuhan and they are not understanding. Which side? Uh, North Korea and the US. Uh, They're like sending signals to each other and trying to... Uh, I mean, the US is pretty blunt. I don't think it's the US position is it. Yeah. 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 No, North Korea, unlike China, I think the U.S. position is basically correct, which is the status quo is unacceptable. We're not going to give any more because North Korea keeps tanking, you know? Every time we give, they just take some more. They've made commitments to denuclearize many, many times, and it just never happens. So. They made a commitment. They had concessions on food. Yeah. Then they pulled out of the NPT and started this testing. I mean, at every stage, it just seems to deteriorate. So the U.S. is not going to give in at all. Well, especially not this group. I mean, it's fair to say the Trump crowd are definitely not. And I don't think even Clinton would have done the same, probably. Not, they wouldn't be... They wouldn't have taken the same policy steps that Trump has taken, but they definitely would not take a different fundamental position on North Korea, I don't think. Um, I, I think that even under Obama, and Obama, you remember, reached out to North Korea. Very conciliatory move, very early in his administration, and what he got in return was a nuclear test. And that's when the Obama administration said, you know. But I feel like Obama kind of put it on the post. It's like a strategic, like patience, something like that. Strategic patience, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But there wasn't any sense of conciliation. It was just basically, we'll wait, we'll tighten sanctions, and we'll just wait. And now that has not worked because their nuclear program keeps going forward. So. Do you think Trump is going to take the same step as Obama did, or he's going to be more aggressive about it? Well, I think I think generally in the U.S. there's a view that you have to be more aggressive, not necessarily with military means, but with economic sanctions, and that's certainly an area where China could do much more on economic sanctions. Not cutting off trade, but, you know, cutting off anything that could help them with their nuclear program, or things of that kind. So, yes, it'll be much more pressure, pressure on China, but pressure on China to put pressure on North Korea, and others who are, who are not obeying the sanctions that the UN has imposed and the like. So I think that'll be, definitely that will happen. The military side, I don't think there's going to be anything on the military side. You're not thinking well, I mean, the fundamental underlying structure is always the same, which is you have to take the risk that they would attack South Korea. And 
I don't see any American administration doing that. Right. Okay. So more like with the peaceful way. I think that's what everybody would want to see. Nobody wants to see war. Oh no, no. And it's, it's gonna be but I don't even remember. Back in the Clinton administration, there was a moment where William Perry and Ash Carter said that if North Korea continued down its road, they, they would have to take military action. I mean, that, that, that was in the Clinton administration. It never happened. But those were serious people who were not very risky, you know, they were not very aggressive people, but they, they said the military action had to be on the line because that was, that was the time when North Korea was continuing to move ahead after the um, agreed framework had broken down in effect. Um, what if North Korea actually moves ahead? It, it has been moving for like all the past years. Well, that's the interesting question. What is the true red line? I don't know. Right. I, mean, I want to hear what Scott says. What Scott says about that? Is it a missile of a particular kind, or is it a thermonuclear? See, the next step is a thermonuclear hydrogen bomb, and they think they're developing that. So. If they tested that and we had inclusive evidence, they tested a hydrogen bomb, and, or they tested a missile that could reach the mainland United States, all of the mainland US. Well, the whole country is a failure of global government. So here's like deploying all of its energies into weapons development, and yeah. it's got people literally starving. It doesn't deliver anything to the population. It's so sad. No, it's a great disappointment for China because, I mean, they're. Their ideal outcome would have been if North Korea had reformed the way China reformed and had a dynamic economy like South Korea, and then, but it, it never happened. So. It, it got a long and also, like the the government that never changes, right? No. It's the same family for the whole. Same time. family, yes, yeah. that's right. I even heard some experts saying that they think the nuclear weapons is already like half done or it's, it's much more progress than other people think. Oh, I think they're, well, they are. They're far along. They've got multi multiple atomic bombs of some kind. Yeah. And they're developing missiles that can be moved, which makes it hard to... To target them. Yeah, that, that was a that was a big problem. And the missiles are moving at longer range, and they're solid fuel, not liquid fuel. There are all kinds of advances they're making. Yeah. So. Not sure what this is. <laughs> what, what is? Oh, it's uh, is it, what is day. It's like steam day. <laughs> I thought it was sweet, but it's not sweet. It looks like it's sesame street. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of tofu, isn't it tofu? I don't know. It's, it's not tofu. It, it's, it's like a strangled egg. It's oh, it's an egg custard. It's a custard. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's like a custard. Mm. Do you like it? It's okay. <laughs> it's not even a dessert, right? Like a pudding? Yeah. It's sort of like that. Well, it's not, yeah, it's savory. It's not sweet. Yeah. Uh, do you need any drinks, cola, or something? Um... Um, I'm happy, happy with water. This is, I'm not sure this is my water. I have extra water. I did it with cream. Oh, okay. I'll take your... I'm not sure that's mine, so I will, I'll just have water. Okay? But is there coffee in there as well? Can I get some? Oh, I'll get some coffee. Water. I'll come and get some coffee. That's fine. Yeah. People are trying to help to keep place your water. Oh, look at the rain. My goodness. This is... This is like a monsoon. Yeah. Thank goodness we didn't have to go outside for lunch. <laughs>